Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the RC Explain channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna be looking at current as well as voltage and how it plays a role in our brushless motors. Now the way that we're gonna go about this is we're gonna take a look at voltage, we're gonna take a look at current, we're gonna define them, and then understand what kind of mechanical outputs we get from those specific parameters from our motor. Now we're also gonna use a hydraulic analogy so that we can compare both voltage and current with some of the parameters within a hydraulic system that we might be a lot more familiar with, or at least it's very easy to understand and visualize. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sum up the video with a bunch of conclusions and see exactly what kind of output we get from our voltage and current parameters. If you're new to the channel here, we often talk about how we can improve the reliability of our power system so that we can see the most success when we go and select our power system. You may also see some parameters on spec sheets or even instruction manuals where you don't know exactly what they mean. We often go through all those parameters that you see in RC. If you don't want to miss one of those videos that we put out on a weekly basis, make sure you hit that subscribe button and then I'll be able to see you in each one of those. Now let's go ahead and start off with what is voltage. Voltage is the potential difference between two points. If we look at our battery pack, our battery pack has a positive terminal and it also has a negative terminal. Terminal. One of those terminals is going to be a reference point, which is going to be the zero volt. And then the other terminal is going to be the source of our positive voltage. The difference between that positive voltage as well as that zero volt is going to be whatever that positive voltage value is. If it's 14.8 volts, then we end up with a potential difference of 14.8 volts. It is possible that you can have a reference point at plus five volts and then you can have the other reference point at minus five volts and then you'd have a total potential difference when you subtract the two of 10 volts. Another way of putting it is that pressure represents voltage in the way that it forces the charge to actually move from one spot to another spot. The higher the pressure, the more chance you have of getting that flow to happen. And that's important to understand when we move this to our hydraulic analogy. When we look at voltage as well as KV, both of those values are important to determine the RPM of our brushless motor. Voltage, as we know, is the potential difference. However, KV is actually a parameter that comes directly from our motor. It's a motor constant. It's one of the multiple motor constants that we have. And KV is how many RPM you get out of that motor for every volt that you apply to it. And this is ultimately what determines the total amount of output RPM. Now, when we look at current, current is the rate of flow of electrons within a circuit. If we look at what this boils down to as a mechanical property, it can be looked at as flow rate. Let's consider volumetric flow rate. What we can relate current within our brushless motor is directly related to our torque output of the motor. Now the way that that works is you have to combine current as well as the KT value of your motor. KT comes directly from your KV constant where KT is equal to one over your KV value. Now what's important to note here is that that KT value in SI terms has to have the 2200 RPM per volt converted also to SI terms. Otherwise your calculation will not work out. Something to keep in mind if you're actually trying to make that calculation. Now let's move to our hydraulic analogy so that we can more visualize our voltage as well as our current. In these two different cases, what we have is a water tank and the water tank is elevated at a height. And in hydraulics, this is known as our head. The way we are able to relate head back to our electrical circuit is again, relating our pressure. And this is what makes that connection back to voltage. If we go and have a lot more water stacked up in a larger tank, we're gonna have a lot more pressure right here at the base of the tank. It's the same idea if you go swimming and you start to dive deep and deeper and deeper. The pressure of the water acting at eight feet versus 50 feet is going to be very different. At 50 feet, you're really gonna feel that pressure of the water. And it's the same idea, why? Because you have a whole bunch of head above you that is gonna create that pressure. Now on the same side, we're gonna have current flow and you can see that if the pipe is wide open, you would expect that that water is going to be able to flow out of there very rapidly, why? Because there's this big massive opening and the flow rate, the volumetric flow rate of that specific tank is going to be very high. And that's what we're equating to current. That volumetric flow rate is gonna be the same as current flowing 
within a circuit. Now, if you imagine trying to get water through that skinny tank on the right hand side, it's going to take a lot of pressure in order to force that water through that skinny pipe in order to get the same amount of water output on both sides. From that analogy, you're able to see exactly how voltage and current influence our tank as well as our electrical circuits. Now let's take a look at what happens when we combine voltage and current on the right hand side of the board. Now if we go and take voltage and we multiply it by current where voltage is measured in volts and current is measured in amps, we get power which can also be measured in watts or kilowatts, where one kilowatt is equal to a thousand watts. If we take a look at exactly what this is equivalent to in something that we're more familiar with, this is essentially saying that RPM multiplied by torque is equivalent to horsepower. Now horsepower is what we use in North America. I'm here in Canada and we also use horsepower in Canada. This is primarily used I was going to say for radio controlled cars, it actually is for radio controlled cars. If you look at nitro cars, a lot of nitro powered cars have the horsepower specification. However, what I meant to say is that we see this a lot within full size cars. All of our cars are rated in a horsepower value. Let me know if you're outside of North America, what kind of power values you use to represent for your full size vehicles. Now if you wanted to measure power output of your full size car, this is exactly what you'd do. You'd measure the RPM, you'd measure the torque, and then you calculate the power. Same thing in electrical circuits. We measure the voltage, we measure the current, you don't measure the power, you calculate the power. Now how do we relate power back to our hydraulic example? Well, we can get a lot of power out of high pressure or high flow rates. It doesn't matter what you're what you're considering. You can extract power depending on how you want to do that. If you were to look at water jets, it, in order to cut metal, they have to boost up the pressures of the water extremely high. They don't really have a high volumetric flow rate, but because of that pressure, they can pierce through quarter inch steel like it's butter. And at the same time, if you look at a river that is flowing, you can extract a lot of power out of that. Not because there's a high pressure, but because there's a high volumetric flow rate. You can use that flow rate in order to end up spinning a turbine that can generate power to power a whole entire home, for example. Uh, some very interesting stuff that you can see the difference between the hydraulic system as well as the electric system, but yet the similarity is on how voltage is equivalent to our pressure and current is equal to the flow rate. Now let's take a look at this question here. I think this is really important to understand because I don't want you to get misled down a specific path. Does this mean you need high current in order to have high amounts of torque? Well, the answer to this is no. You don't need to have a high amount of current flowing through that brushless motor in order to have a high output torque. Now, the reason why this is true is because it's not just about the current. It's also about that KT value. And you can look at the example here that we have. If you have a motor that has a KV of 2200 versus a motor that has a KV of 1100, the KT values, if you take the inverse, remember what I said before, you have to work out the correct units to arrive at these. These are milli newton meters per amp. The KT value is 4.34 for the 2200 kV motor and it's 8.68 for the 1100 kV motor. And what you can notice from them is it's exactly double. Double the KV here, double the KT on the opposite motor. If you look at the voltage that you run through both of these specific motors, the 2200 KV motor is going to experience a 4S pack where the 1100 KV motor is going to experience an 8S pack. And that means we're going to pull about 75 amps from our 2200 KV motor and 37.5 amps from our 1100 kV motor. The total amount of RPM that we get out of each one of these motors is about 32 and a half thousand RPM. So the actual output RPM is the same and the total amount of torque output that we get from these motors is 3 to 5.5 millinewton meters. As you can see with both of these specific motors, it doesn't matter about the amperage or the KT value or the KV value even, you can get the same amount of torque output from each one of those motors as well as even the power output for those specific motors. Both of these motors are going to be pumping out 
1110 watts of raw power for you to use in any type of application. What is important about these setups is you really ultimately need to know what voltage you're going to be using for your specific application. Then you can go ahead and select the correct KV for that motor. Once you have all of that selected, then it comes down to the gear ratios or the propeller that you're using for your specific application so that you're able to control the current output. The load that you place on that motor is going to be directly related to the current. Why do we know that? Well, we just went through that current is related to torque. And if you're placing more of a load on your application, that means it's going to require more torque to twist that load. And then what does that do? Drives up your current. Too much current and you can blow up those electrical components, whether it be your motor, your battery pack, or your speed control. This is how all of that is related. I hope you were able to learn something about current as well as voltage and how it actually influences the output parameters of a brushless motor. Like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Monday.